It's eight o'clock in the morning in the western Sydney suburb of Kingswood. Have you got a new lady with you? This is my mother. Oh, really? Martin. This is Joy. Hello, Joy. How are you? I spoke about you on the weekend, Joy. Oh. I spoke about joy and oh, happiness. Yes. <laughs> and what's the difference between joy? What's the difference? I don't know. <laughs> Pastor Marty Beckett is warming up volunteers, readying clothes to give away to people who can't afford their own. And we've got millions of pillows. Really? Yeah. I need pillows. pillows. I need pillows. Oh, do you? Oh, I all didn't right. know you had pillows. Yeah. Like now, I'm just giving a guy a blanket and I've given him some sheets, yeah. but I don't have pillows. Yeah. Pillows are the one thing we, I mean, they're, they're a major cost factor. Yeah. The ones we try to get are the thicker ones, because yeah. you at least want to have a good night's sleep. Yeah. Oh, God, we just thank you for this day, Lord God. Inside the church hall, a quick prayer precedes a briefing on the food being given away this week. Amen. 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 All right, so the first thing, with the, we've got new stock in respect to the Minestrone soup. Um, each um, person could take two. Okay. Outside of that, one per person. The baby food, just load them up. With the cold stuff, um, it's again one... It's one yogurt per person, one of the um, sausage rolls um, per person. They can take as many as the patties they want because they've got a large consignment. They can take as many as the dips as they want. Okay. Okay. Yeah. With the panna cotta, okay. it's a um, just in case people ask, it's a um, dessert type um, mm -hmm. uh, sweet cheese. Um, but again, it's an option either between the flavoured cheddar cheese or the panna cotta. Yeah. It's one or the other. Okay. With fruit and veg. That's um, about a third of what we got, yep. so we can um, load people up with the fruit and veg. Yep. Okay. Guys, can I just have everyone's attention quickly? Um, the general comment about the food that we distribute. Some food aren't labelled. I'll give you an example. This is food from a company called Rosella, who's no longer in business. Um, they, cannot, we can, they had to take their labels off, but we received their donated stock. All food that is provided to you guys is fit for human consumption and are all released by the manufacturer before we hand them out to you guys. What you've got today is we have what we call a free food shop. And so a lot of families struggling. We get anywhere from 100 to 130 families that are struggling every week. They're on Centrelink. They might be, you know, uh, just struggling to pay the electricity, pay the rent. And this becomes a real a real help out, you know, just to get through the week, get through the fortnight. And so we provide, here we provide fruit and vegetables. Uh, we'll provide all kinds of things like cereal, you know, just staple things, bread, when we can, milk, uh, those kind of things which we all take for granted. Spreads, Vegemite, peanut butter, whatever it might be when we've got it. And we just make sure that families get everything they need. It's so. a bit of a production line here. Where does all the <laughs> food come from? It is a bit of a production line. Food comes from all different places. It'll come from places like the local bakery, Baker. Baker's Delight, um, Woolworths. A lot of the fruit and veg comes from Food Bank, Woolworths, um, different suppliers. Oz Harvest are great supporters of what we do. Um, and then everything else comes from uh, wherever. People just are generous. They give. Is it the food that other people throw away? Or? Some of it is. Um, Stuff we're getting from Woolies uh, and Oz Harvest is stuff that you and I might say is not fit for our home, but it's still good. And so we go through, the girls will sort it out, like the girls will actually sort through, make sure that it is fit for consumption, and whatever's not goes in the bin. So it comes from places like Food Rescues that Woolworths uh, host. Um, so it's good food. Okay. <laughs> By 9.30 a.m., the food shop is flat out. What would you like, honey? Do you want some onions? 52, 53, 54. Robin now runs the volunteers and supervises the food queue. Anything here you like? Just a few years ago, she was in it herself. When the GFC hit in 2008, she lost her job and her home. We ran a successful caravan sales business and just during the GFC it was just went from bad to worse in a very short time so we ended up having to put ourselves in voluntary liquidation and um, consequently lost our business and our home and our cars and uh, jobs as well so um, we, that, that all happened within a, a fairly quick period that we realised we couldn't save it. So. And was that a surprise to you? Do you expect to end up in that situation? Never expected to end up in that situation. You know, we've always worked, we've always um, 
you know, being able to provide for our children, pay our bills and everything, suddenly we're just thrown into this situation where we just couldn't, we just had nothing basically. So. And you went, you went on to Newstart? It's very hard to afford on Newstart. I mean, it, it's just not enough money. Like, um, I mean, I don't know how you do it, but the amount of money, you know, if you're paying, you know, $350 a week rent and you're getting, you know, if you're, um, we were a couple, we were receiving about $800 a fortnight. Uh, you know, there is, there's just very little left for food or bills or anything. Um, so to be in that situation for a short time, I think maybe you can manage, but to be on long-term social security, you know, it's, it's very, very difficult, you know, very much living in poverty. Okay. Yes. Her husband eventually found a full-time job, but Robin stopped looking. I was pretty much unemployable because of my age, um, even though I'd run my own cafe and so I, I was quite astounded by that um, and for my husband to be quite, quite skilled um, and yet to, to have so much trouble getting a job, I uh, just found that, I just didn't expect that at all. So. Above the food shop, Marty moves on to a meeting of his charity's housing group. They lease about 100 properties in Western Sydney, which are then sublet to people who can't get homes without help. She's got four kids living there. They all, are they all dependents? Well, no. She's got, um, she's got an 18-year-old. No, he's turning 18 this year. Well, turning 18. 15-year-old? 15. So the kids, with the new setup, like that, they'd be, on, they'd be on a payment, wouldn't they? He should be on new start at least. He's uh, youth allowance, yeah? Hmm. So he's on youth allowance. What about the 17 year old? Because there's the 15 year old and the 17 year old. Yeah. The 17 year old is on youth allowance. The 15 yeah. is um, a dependent. Of still them. dependent. Mm. Okay. And then she's got the two younger ones. Mm -hmm. Okay. <clears throat> Do we know what her income is? Have you got her okay. following? Because we just need to know where she's at. Because she can probably put enough aside to buy some of that stuff. Oh, just bit by bit. Or we just get her set up. Yeah. There is a constant struggle here to monitor not just the needs but the spending of clients. What's her rent? Do you know how much? 360. So hers is 360. And she's paying weekly, isn't she? Well, she would say she wouldn't have much money left over from this. I mean, she's, she gets paid fortnightly, so she'll, she'll still have a couple hundred bucks That's left right. over. She reckons she's going to have nothing on, left over from food or anything. And then her, her son gets new start, right? Yeah, that might be better. Use allowance. Use allowance. Do you know how much that is? Yeah. About 200 bucks a fortnight, maybe? So I think there's something's going on, like yeah. she's. Okay. Right. She loves it. Yeah. Okay, so how, how about tomorrow? Did you whisper because the camera's there? <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, I, I think that's the case. <laughs> so I reckon, I reckon she, she reckons she's going to have no money. Okay, so how about but I think she's going to have money. Yeah. Is that a fine? And um, we need oh. to make sure she so realises she's just got a budget. Because we're going to help her out with all this stuff. Okay. Well, she's not going to pay for anything. I actually grew up in Adelaide, South Australia, a place called Elizabeth. And uh, look, that was housing commission. The whole street was housing commission. There was not anyone that owned their own home in that street where, you know, when I was growing up. Um, and mum and dad were on the dole or on Centrelink at the time, whatever it was back then, 20 odd years ago, 30 years ago. Um, and so uh, we grew up in that region, in housing commission, needing you know assistance with food, needing assistance with just paying the bills. It, it, you know, I relate to these kind of guys because I've been there. Um, yeah, I, and I don't think it's gotten any easier. You know, I, I, I tell you the truth, I think it was easier back then than what it is now. Uh, guys have got it real tough. You know, they have. I think education is one of the biggest areas too that these guys are let down. Even though we were in a housing commission. I, I think we were still educated, our parents still had aspirations and dreams. I think a lot of people have let go of those dreams. This area is actually where we've got units. So a lot of the units around here, uh, we have pockets within there that people lease, mainly because it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a lower income sort of rental. Mm -hmm. So someone on a low income can actually rent a place mm -hmm. uh, for about 280 maybe $300. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's some of the only areas you can do it in Sydney at the moment. And that would chew up a, a lot of an unemployment benefit. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, look, uh, and you know, an average, 
I mean, an average single guy on about 5.30 a week, uh, a fortnight, um, on their new start, if you're paying 280, it doesn't add up, you know what I mean? Like 280 a week. Um, and so the only way to do that is for them to find roommates, share accommodation, um, affordable housing is just, it's just non-existent out here. There's not enough of it. We just stand in the gap between the actual client and the real estate. I mean, the other thing too, Jeff, is a lot of our clients come to us, they're actually blacklisted, you know, that because of their low income, they can fall behind in rent. Um, because of whatever needs going on around them, they, they don't pay their rent on time, they don't pay their electricity, uh, they fall behind, they get kicked out, they're evicted. Um, well, then they go on a thing called ticker, and ticker actually then makes it impossible for them to rent a house. So we've got to stand in the gap for them. So they wouldn't get a place without you, and you take on all the risk for them getting that place? We take on 100% of the risk um, because uh, we, look, we, we sign the lease on their behalf, sometimes with them, uh, but either way, we're, we're assuming all the risk. We give the real estate 100% guarantee that the property is, uh, the rent is going to be paid on time and that the property is going to be kept in good order. Yeah.